you look at this, uh, or try to examine this question, principally on the humanitarian aspect, you have to say that invading power, regardless of the cause, need to concern itself with what happened in the aftermath of the war. There is no question in my mind, the uh, United States did not have to go to Vietnam, but it did. The United States did not have to go to a um, wage war in Iraq, but it did. The situation in Afghanistan is somewhat different. But the truth of the matter is, regardless of the cost, since we went out of our way and engaged these countries, we have precipitated in one form or another significant destruction. Can we, in fact, from a moral perspective, turn our back and say, well, this is your problem? So then, it's no wonder that the United States, even 50 years later, is trying to help the Vietnamese to, to do some cleanup, because we have a moral obligation to do so. And had we used or, or, or chemical or your weapons being used by uh, whoever, by either party, the United States would still have an obligation to do so. So I think, I think this is a, should be a given. Uh, and this, for example, this is the, the main reason why the United States was outraged when Saddam Hussein used uh, chemical weapons um, uh, against the Kurds. And that precipitated the imposition of no, no fly zone uh, over the Turkish and Kurdish territory. So yes, we do recognize the importance of our moral obligations, and we should actually never forget that. Well, uh, Syria is a dictatorship. It's been a dictatorship for the last 40 years. Uh, and so the reliance on military prowess that would include the, the kind of uh, horrible weapons like chemical and biological, it is a part of the apparatus, part of the system that can allow them to stay in power. Although they have declared time and again, and they will not use it, for example, in this current uh, crisis against their, against their own people, but they are openly threatened to use it against any power that may intervene in, in this Syrian crisis, basically admitting openly to the whole world that they possess this type of weapons. This is, of course, extraordinarily dangerous. Extraordinarily dangerous because these weapons cannot be guarded specifically under the present conditions very carefully so that it will not fall in the hands of the wrong people. It is extremely dangerous if Syria, for whatever reason, decide to use such weapon against a neighboring country. It is extremely dangerous if accident actually can happen without any intention of using it, and that certainly is a possibility. And therefore, I think the international community should get together, specifically United States and Russia, uh, and other powers to the extent they can be involved, to make sure that no matter what, these weapons are safeguarded and of course be removed from Syria if it's at all possible. And one thing I think I should emphasize here, that if Syria chooses for whatever reason to use such weapons, specifically against any neighboring country, for example Israel or that would be, for all intents and purposes, the end of Syria as we know it. Because Israel retaliation would be swift, massive, but Israel will not hesitate to take whatever action in that direction to ensure that such a such thing cannot happen in the future. So, so I think the Syrian regime understands the, the peril that having such weapon is not an only is not an asset, it, it could become an extraordinary huge uh, liability if they don't know how to handle it now and in the immediate future.